What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now, here on our channel, we always try to teach you something in one way, shape, or form. We've always wanted to be known as an educational channel. And as a dive instructor, that is my job. I'm an educator. I'm here to teach people how to dive safely. Now, with being an instructor, there are several different hats that I must wear. I can't always just wear wear the teaching hat, sometimes I have to wear that salesman hat too. And sometimes dive instructors actually get bad names because to their students or to their customer base, all that customer or student sees is someone who's just trying to sell gear, sell a uh, training course or sell a trip in general. So in today's video, I'm going to talk a little bit about being more of a mentor than a salesman as a dive professional and how it will actually help you in the future. So as I stated in the beginning, sometimes it's better to be a mentor than it is to simply be a salesman. Now, as an instructor, of course, we do have to wear multiple hats. We do have to sell continuing education. We do have to sell equipment. And of course, we need to sell trips as well. But if we mentor people in this industry versus just trying to sell them stuff that they may or may not need at the time, then of course we are going to have repeat customers. There's going to build a trust between you and your clients, whether it's a student or just a customer in general, and they're going to come back to you, which will make you more successful. Well, in this video, I want to focus on a young lady that I actually mentored back when she was in high school, and I brought her up through the ranks, and she ended up doing a school project on scuba diving, but not just diving in general. She did a school project on the physiological effects of breathing gases at depth and how divers overcome that. Now that sounds like a mouthful and it really is, but if you think back to your open water program, all the questions that she asked during her school project was answered during her open water program. What we did is we mentored her through a slew of different courses to work her up to where she could answer these questions pretty descriptively to her classmates and even to her professor in school, and she ended up getting the highest grade that anyone's ever got at that school based off the topic she chose and the information she presented as well, and she done that through SCUBA in general. And by mentoring this young lady, not only did she get the high score, she also went on to be one of our dive masters here at the shop, and she also manages the shop for us during the summertime as well. So let me introduce you to Miss Summer Sigmund. Summer is our part-time manager here at the marina and dive shop uh, during the summer months. Uh, of course, she is in college now. She's already graduated high school with honors and she's moved on to college. And she is studying a management-based program while in college and she's doing very well for herself. But I really believe that by mentoring her and not just selling her the classes, not just selling her the gear, and not just selling her the travel, that it really helped her out. It helped her gain more knowledge on diving. It helped her stay safe and it gave her that drive and that passion to continue on not only with her scuba studies but with her general studies and well. Now Summer's doing very well for herself just like your students and your customer base can do very well for themselves too but all you've got to do is give them that little push that little eff extra effort on your ends going to help them out tremendously by you simply being a mentor to that person and not a salesperson to them, then of course they're going to do a lot better. So let me show you a couple little small clips here. This is from her presentation during her class and I'll also link this presentation as a whole down below. It'll be an unlisted video if you want to go watch her entire presentation. The entire thing's only about 25 minutes long, but you can see the how hard she studied for this. You can see the research that she did for it as well. And like I said, her hard work paid off. My hard work paid off by mentoring her and she ended up up getting the the highest grade that anyone in her school has ever got. So let's take a quick look at some of the clips. We're all looking forward to it. Um, you can begin as soon as you feel like you're ready. Good luck. So for my project, I want to do something meaningful more to me. So since I am in the area of scuba diving, that's what I chose. So for my driving question, it is, what physiological effects do certain gases have on scuba divers at depth, and how do they do it? So the different partial pressures that I with oxygen, nitrogen, helium, and different mixed gases. 
So oxygen has different mixes for different types of dyes, and it also becomes toxic at different depths. Nitrogen. An increase in nitrogen will decrease the risk of oxygen toxicity, but nitrogen itself can become too risk to different diving maladies. And nitrogen can become narcotic at certain depths. Helium. It is essentially just a replacement inert gas for nitrogen. It reduces the effects of nitrogen mycosis because it has little to no narcotic effect. And different mixed gases will be enriched air nitrox, heliox, and trimix. So be training for the deeper depths. You have deep diving and you have extended range or technical diving. So the deep diving, you are experiencing the effects of higher partial pressures at depth firsthand. You have to complete a 60 foot dive, an 80 foot dive, and a 100 foot dive. So they learn how to plan X2 dives while reducing the risk of higher partial pressures at depth. And then extended range or technical diving, they learn how to go further, go beyond, and go deeper. And for technical diving, it is a lot more training, but they also get to do more set balance of time. And they cheap. At the top, you will, hard to see, but they find the air they are breathing, and they go down to the depth that they want to achieve. And they can go across and find out how much uh, time they are able to spend in that depth. And they will drop down, and that letter at the bottom for the second dive table will tell them how much time their no decompression time is, which will be how much time it takes for their body to bleed out the nitrogen that they just absorbed. Um, what would you say is the biggest mistake people make um, that, even if it doesn't lead to something lethal, but it's something that you would consider extremely dangerous, you know, as far as like what the symptoms were? What, what is the most common mistake that people Personally, I think that the biggest mistake that people make, or that divers make, is that they don't listen to the regulations that are set for their safety. They're like, oh, well, that's not going to happen to me. I can do it still. So they go to these limits that, or their recreational limit without the training, so that they start to experience the effects that they don't know to do. And divers, they have to dive with the buddy. I mean, they don't have to, but it's really advised because some, anything can happen really underwater. So, Whenever they do that, they are putting themselves and their buddies in danger. So as you can see, Summer did very well in her project. Not only did she score the highest grade, she also graduated with honors from her high school. And of course, she's off in college now. But guys, like I said, if you are a dive professional, try your best to be more of a mentor than simply just a salesman. You will get repeat customers, which will make you more successful. But more importantly, you're producing better quality divers when you're training them. If you become a mentor than just a salesman, not, you're going to produce better quality divers and safer divers as well, and that's going to give you that repeat business because they're going to have that trust factor there with you. They're going to come back to you, which is just going to help you financially be more successful as well. Because I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Like I said, there's a link down below for the full segment of Miss Summer giving her speech. If you want to go uh, watch that video, it would be an unlisted video down below. Simply click the link and you can see how, how well Summer did on her project. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it. If you got any questions on what it takes to be a dive professional or how to become a dive professional, drop me a comment down below or you can reach me at brian at lakehickoryscuba.com and I'll be glad to answer your emails as well. But guys, I'm going to go ahead and sign off for today. So take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.